Good morning all. Another day and another DC to DC converter. Well, my motto is make videos about what you enjoy. I certainly enjoy playing with DC to DC converters. Now this is another Ming He. I suppose I should turn that the right way around. This is the Ming He model D3806. 38 volts maximum output, 6 amps. And I particularly like this one because it's a buck boost or it's a boost buck. So I can put my uh, solar power battery input into this and it also has uh, a DC 2.1 millimeter jack on it. Not all of them have that. So I'm, I'm often using um, these sorts of things to uh, convert from the terminal block to that jack. This one has it on there. I mean, it's just perfect. So uh, this one can take sort of 12 or 13 volts, whatever it happens to be, depending on whether it's sunny or not. It's not sunny today. And boost it up to uh, a maximum of 38, I think that's flat out, or a minimum of, well, zero. So what it can do is it can take my 12 or 13 volts and either take it down in voltage, uh, buck, or take it up in voltage, boost. So as I say, really, this is the perfect bench power supply. I can have anything uh, from 0 to 38 volts out and 0 to 6 amps. Now, if I wanted 38 volts at 6 amps, that's going to put a massive strain on my 12 volt input. Uh, that's about a three times gain. That's kind of 18 amps on the input. Well, that's not going to work because uh, this cable is one of those cigarette lighter ones at the other end and that's got a fuse in which I think is probably three or four amps. But anyway, it's still a very versatile and useful bench power supply. But there's always a downside, isn't there? And uh, the downside on this is probably going to be that it's not very efficient. Basically, this device has a two stage circuit. It has a boost and then a buck. Or is it a buck and then a boost? Well, we'll certainly look into that, but because it has those two separate stages, you can see there are two inductors, two main um, sort of get hot components that get hot. You can see the heat sinks there. Because it has two stages, you've got efficiency losses in both of them. So I can't remember what the spec is on this. We'll have a look at that in a moment. But this is probably only going to be something like about 80% efficient because you've got uh, probably 90% in one stage and then 90% in another, something like that. Let's take a look at the eBay listing. So here it is, it's a DC to DC uh, digital boost and buck power supply module. The title is Digital Step Up Step Down Module Boost Buck Converter Solar Charging. This solar thing I think is because uh, the idea is you put a solar panel on the input and it can vary wildly in voltage and you can get a stable output that's either lower or higher. I think that's what it's all about. Uh, so I bought this one from uh, Kuei Liao Liang and it was $17.40 free shipping. Now there's some spec here. Input voltage is DC 10 to 40. Now I'm running it quite close to the bottom of that range, uh, 12 or 13 volts I'm putting in. Input current 0 to 8 amps, output voltage uh, DC 0 to 38 volts, hence the 38 in the model number, and output current 06, 3806 is the model number. So here are the item details, 100% brand new, high quality, small size, high power, high efficiency. Well, it really isn't, because if you look at the conversion efficiency number here, it's up to 80%. It's actually quite poor, and that's because it uses two stages of DC to DC conversion. They're asynchronous, so they have diode, so you have diode losses. Yes, it's not very efficient. Now, let's do a bit of preliminary investigation. Uh, firstly, is this buck boost or boost buck? There's a left to right flow here. Here's the input, here's the output. So whatever we come across first, uh, it will be the first stage. So. Let's have a look. Input plus is on this two pin connector. That's just paralleled with the DC jack. So input plus is there. As I say, that also is paralleled with the uh, end pin of the 2.1 millimeter DC jack. It goes through here and up to there. Now there is the big inductor. So if I'm to draw a schematic of this, 
input positive goes through an inductor, then it comes down here, and this is a two-pin device. But if you look on the other side, it's actually a TO220 uh, power device. Now, if it's two pins, it has to be a diode. Can't be anything else, really, can it? So positive comes in through the inductor and through a diode and then onto this pair of pins. And if we flip it over again, that pair of pins. Oh, well, that's a little capacitor. And then there's a big electrolytic there. So this is a boost stage. We come in, we go through the inductor, we go through the diode, and then we smooth the output. Let's look at Wikipedia's article on boost converters. So the Wikipedia article on boost converter, we've seen this a few times. The supply comes in through an inductor, through a diode, and goes out. Now by switching this switch on and off very quickly, we get the uh, flyback effect on the inductor and the voltage at this point rises up. So uh, we should be seeing through the inductor, through the diode, but between the two of them, there needs to be a MOSFET. Let's check that. So looking at this once again, that's positive in. We come in, we go through the inductor, that's the inductor there, through the diode and out to our smoothing capacitors. But between the inductor, which is there, and the diode, which is there, here's the MOSFET, which pulls this point down to ground. This is effectively ground. Actually, that's ground. This thing across here is a very low value resistor. There it is, one of these big low value resistors for measuring current. Um, but yes, this is a classic boost converter circuit. So I'm just gonna sketch that down on a piece of paper. So here's my input. Um, the boost converter is the first thing through the inductor, through the diode, smoothing capacitor, and the MOSFET here is switching on and off rapidly to produce this flyback effect and raise this voltage up. Raise this voltage up to what? Well, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But then what happens after we've smoothed the output of the boost converter? Where's the buck converter? Well, here are the two capacitors. That's the little um, polyester one, I think it was. That's the um, electrolytic one. It then comes down to this five pin device, which is that. It's on a heat sink. Let's see what it is. Okay, it's an XL Semi XL4016. So here's the track running up here, smoothing capacitor there, goes into the input of this device, actually pin five by the look of it. There's a little smoothing capacitor there across the input is my guess. Let's look at the data sheet of the XL4016. Here it is, XL Semi 8 amp, 180 kilohertz, 40 volt, buck DC to DC converter. So we know that that second stage device is a buck converter. So it's boost first, then buck. Now let's have a look at some of these numbers. We've got a wide eight to 40 volt input voltage range. So the boost converter could go up as high as 40 volts. I wonder how high it does actually go. Output is adjustable from 1.25 volts to 36 volts. Now that's a bit weird because the Voltage range on the digital controller, the little uh, front panel thing, goes all the way from 0 to 38. So how are they squeezing 0 volts to 38 volts out of a chip that supposedly only goes from 1.25 to 36? I don't really know. The rest of this is not terribly important. 8 amps. Uh, where's 8 amps? There's 8 amps. Constant current output capability. Um, this device is rated at 6 amps, so they're not using the full eight amps, but then you'd probably have to have bigger heat sinks to put eight amps through this chip. Uh, just one other thing, we saw that the uh, input went into pin five, well there it is, pin five, and it is indeed V in. So I've added that to my diagram, it's a very simplified diagram, here's the buck stage, it's an XL Semi 4016, there's an inductor there somewhere, this is actually a five pin device, I've shown it as three, very simplified. Um, there are probably capacitors on the input here, there are probably capacitors on the output, but in, we boost, we buck, and out we go. Now, why has it been designed to boost first and then buck? Why can't we buck first and then boost? Well, if you want the output volt voltage to go all the way down to zero volts, and I've set it for zero volts, let's switch the output on, and we've got 0.01 volts on the output, which is very interesting because that chip said it could only go down to 1.25, maybe it performs better than its actual spec. If we want an output voltage of zero, 
then we'd have to have the ability, if we bucked first, to buck down to zero and then boost back up to something else. Well, you can't boost zero volts up to some other voltage because the current would be, well, infinite. So you'd have to have some complicated thing where you bucked down to a voltage that varies dependent on what you select here and then boost back up for your output voltage. Much, much easier to boost up to, I don't know, about 40 volts probably, and then use a controlled buck converter to get back down to the voltage you want. In this case, zero. But I'm interested to know what is this intermediate voltage, the voltage after the boost converter, but before the buck converter. What voltage do they boost up to in this intermediate stage? Now, interestingly, uh, the uh, output of the boost converter is here, that was the electrolytic capacitor, comes down this track and runs into this buck converter XL semi chip. So actually this point here, right near the edge, is the intermediate voltage. So if I stick a digital voltmeter on there, and this is quite an interesting one. I bought this quite a long time ago, and I just remember that this can take, well actually it's written on there I think, can take up to 120 volts, between 5 and 120 volts. It's self-powered, um, so it's got a massive range, and I don't have to power it separately with a battery. So I'm going to solder that on, uh, well, basically across that capacitor, so that we're looking at the output of the boost converter. I want to see what voltage that is prior to going into this controlled buck stage. Let's get the soldering iron out. Right, while I tin these wires, I'm just thinking that XL semi chip, no, they don't want to tin, um, can take between 8 and 40 volts. So the input to it, which is the output of the boost converter, there's a huge blob forming here, needs to be between 8 and 40 volts. And yet the output of this module is up to 38 volts. So you'd think that this intermediate voltage would have to be 40 volts, otherwise you'd never get 38 out of the second stage. Right, that's enough tinning of that. Let's tin this. I think I'll tack this on immediately after that um, electrolytic capacitor, so ground there and positive voltage there. Uh, that wants to sit behind that, so let's solder. I have unplugged this because although I like playing with things while they're on soldering things while they're on is probably not brilliantly clever. Right, that'll do. That's tacked on, so that should work. Right, wait for the bang. Oh, 13.2. That's weird. I was expecting to see more like 40 volts. Now, this module is set for zero volts out. I switch it on, does that change? Mm, it really doesn't. But I'll leave that on and I'll start raising the voltage of this because if this is going to put out 38 volts, then this intermediate voltage after the boost stage is going to have to go up. So let's start raising that up. And it's not doing anything yet. 12.9, this is 6, 7, 8, 9. Ah, now the boost. Uh, stage output is starting to rise. This is 14 and that's 18. So we've got about four volts of overhead, four volts more going into the buck converter chip than is coming out approximately, actually about three volts. Let's keep going. And that intermediate boost voltage is going up. Uh, let's go to 25 volts. So that's 25 volts in the output. We've got 30 volts on the boost uh, on output of the boost stage, that's about 5 volts of differential between the input of the buck and the output of the buck. So this is really clever. The more voltage you want out of the buck stage, the more voltage that the boost converter puts out. That actually helps with efficiency, because there's no point boosting up to 40 volts if all you want out is 2 volts. Um, it looked like it went to about 13 as the lowest vol voltage on the boost converter. Let's keep going. Let's go up to about, I don't know, 32 volts. And we've got 38.5 on the boost. 
Now the boost can't go much higher than that because the maximum input voltage on the XL semi chip was 40. So let's keep going. 32, 33. Ah, and you can see that this tops out at 40. So that's really interesting. The boost converter is controlled. It's got a controlled voltage of between about 13 and 40. And when we start getting up to these higher voltages, let's take this all the way up to 38, which is its maximum. Oh, 41. That's assuming, of course, that this voltmeter is accurate. It may not be. But certainly around 40 volts coming out of the boost converter now and then being bucked back down to 38. It's actually showing the measured voltage now, 37.97. If I turn it off, you'll see the set voltage, which is 38. Now, interestingly, now that I've turned the output off, the boost converter has dropped right back down to 12.7. Turn the output on. The boost converter whizzes up to 40.9, and the output of the buck stage is up at 38. So yes, this device actually varies the voltage of both stages so that the intermediate voltage isn't unnecessarily high if you're asking for fairly low voltages on the output. That's actually quite clever. Right, let's try this with a load now. I've stuck a bulb on there. It's actually my 24 volt uh, truck brake light bulb, which um, I can use to show that this thing can step up because I've only got, eh, what have we got today? 12.9 volts coming in. So I've set this for 18 volts, uh, six amp current limit. So there's really no current limit. Uh, so let's switch on 18 volts. We'll uh, light that up reasonably, bright, reasonably brightly. So we've now got a step up, but the step up is from my now 12.7 volts because it's being loaded a bit uh, to 21.7 after the boost stage and then back down to 18 volts after the buck stage. Uh, how much current are we drawing? We're drawing 0.8 amps. Excellent. Now there is a way, I think, of showing power on this module. I've got a feeling you've got to boot it up with the OK button held down. And then it shows more options uh, when you click this uh, OK button. Let's give that a try. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm going to unplug it, hold the OK button. Right. Oh, I think I missed my chance. Let's do it again. Hold the OK button. Zero, one, or two. Zero, one, or two. I can't remember which one it is. I think it might be two. So let's go two. No. No, that's still only showing me uh, voltage and current. I'm going to have to rehearse this and then come back. Well, while I'm at it, I might as well do the other option. So let's power it down. Press OK, which is the zero option. Zero, let go. Yes. So I've now selected the zero option. And that is that it automatically switches the output on when you power it up. So power it up, the output automatically switches on. If I set the zero option to no, N, then when I power it on, it doesn't automatically switch the output on. I mean, you might want one or you might want the other. This is probably the safer option. OK, so finally, let's wind this up nice and bright. Uh, 24 volt brake light bulb can probably take about 28 volts maximum. So 28 volts, uh, 6 amp current limit. So there's no real current limit on there. Oh, well, let's go for it. And that's nice and bright. Uh, 28 volts. See, 28 volts. Uh, one amp is that. 28 watts, therefore. And we're getting a, a count up on the uh, amp hours. So the intermediate stage is at 33 volts in order to provide 28 volts on the output of the buck converter. That's probably getting quite warm now. Not yet. Is the boost converter warm? No, that feels cold. That feels like it's warming up. But yeah, that's very interesting, isn't it? That it has variable um, midpoint voltage depending on what you're asking for at the output. It makes sense because it makes for a more efficient circuit. Not that this two-stage circuit is very efficient at all anyway, but that certainly helps a little bit. 
Uh, right, one more thing to play with. Uh, this is a 21 watt bulb at 24 volts. So let's see if it is 21 watts. I've set it for 24 volts. Let's switch on. Uh, the intermediate voltage is 28.7. Right, 23.98, 22.2 watts. 23.98 volts, that's 24. Uh, was that 0.9 amps? Let's wait for it to come around again. Uh, 0.93 amps, 22.2 watts, so it's a little bit uh, burning a bit more power than it's supposed to, and it's counting up the uh, amp hours. Yeah, that's good fun, isn't it? Now, I'm almost tempted to leave this voltmeter on here, I've sort of blue tacked it to that heatsink, because it's quite nice to know what the uh, intermediate voltage after boost and before buck actually is. When this thing is off it sort of settles down to uh, this minimum voltage of about 12 point something. Switch on, that whizzes up and then the uh, buck converter, ouch that's quite hot, then the buck converter uh, regulates down to what you've actually asked for. I love this sort of stuff. Now I've no doubt that um, people are going to say where did you get that uh, 5 to 120 volt self-powered voltmeter because that looks really neat and I've just done a search on eBay and they're still available, which is great. Uh, so I searched for LED voltmeter 120 volts and there's one here which is DC 15 to 120 volts, uh, new, $4.25, that's an auction. Uh, but here's a mini DC 5 to 120 volts voltmeter, uh, that one's blue, lots of those have sold, $4.79. So I'll put links to the digital voltmeters as well as the uh, boost buck converter. So yes, I think the Ming He, what was it called? D3806, really should be my uh, bench power supply of choice, even though it has an unforgivably low efficiency of up to 80%. But then I suppose it doesn't really matter, does it? Because this is solar power, it's free energy. Who cares if I'm throwing 20% of it away? So reluctantly I desolder the uh, self-powered voltmeter. Oh, I've left all sorts of bits of solder splash on there. Reluctantly I remove that, but uh, yeah, that's the D3806 back to its original uh, state. So I hope you enjoyed that video on a yet another DC to DC converter. And I've got even more to come, believe it or not. But for the moment, cheerio.